The International Baccalaureate, also known as the IB, claims to develop caring young people to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners. But is this really the case? My name is Joey, and I experienced firsthand the other side of the IB. I was supposed to complete the IB diploma in July 2008, until they decided that one of my internal assessments, which I unintentionally sent to my partner, looked too similar to my partner's, and decided not to award either of us with a diploma, saying that we have colluded. Do note, first of all, that I have never heard of the term collusion in my entire education, which included the IB's primary, middle years, and diploma program. Whether this is the IB or my school's fault, I will let you decide. But the point is, their decision stripped the diploma away from me, and along with that, the place at my dream university, which I have worked the past years to achieve. It has also brought great shame and sadness to myself and my family. At only the age of 18, I had no future and no hope. Their decision also meant that I had to redo my internal assessment and retake my exam in one year's time. I was lucky that Monash College in Australia ignored the IB's verdict and took me in. The past year has given me a lot of time to reflect on how much the IB's decision has changed me. The first thing I noticed was that my sense of right and wrong has been thrown into disarray. The IB claims to nurture caring people, but their decision left me a cold person. Its decision, to which I only had one chance of explaining myself and no chance of appealing, made me realize how hard it is for people to actually make a difference in a world where there are larger, more authoritative figures hovering around. Despite my enthusiasm that came with making this video, I also realized that it would not do anything to the IB. We sadly do live in a world where it is the case of I'm big, you're small, I'm right, you're wrong, and there's nothing you can do about it. All it took was somebody who I have never met in Cardiff to crush my future, and now they've probably forgotten all about it already. The IB claims to be a non-profit educational foundation. Strangely enough, the rules of the IB states that if you were guilty of malpractice in an exam, you can carry your internal assessment grade over, and you only have to redo the exam. However, if, like me, you were guilty of malpractice in the internal assessment, you have to redo both the internal assessment and the exam. It might seem strange at first, but consider that you do not have to register to redo your internal assessment. You do, however, have to register to retake your exam. In order to do that, you have to pay a total of 175 US dollars per subject. Surely, it costs less than that to print some questions onto a few sheets of paper and airmail them. Now bear with me as I do the maths. The IB claims they currently administer 700,000 students. These include PYP and MYP as well as diploma students. So we'll cut it down to say 200,000 doing the diploma. Let's just say for argument's sake, 0.01% of these students suffer my fate and have to retake their exams. There are probably much more, but 0.01% comes up to 2,000 students. 2,000 times 175 US dollars equals 350,000 US dollars, which the IB gains every year from forcing students to retake an exam they did no wrong in. In fact, the IB states on their website themselves that 51% of its funding comes from its examination fees. Just to put that into perspective, the amount of money the IB gains from merely student exam retakes in the case of students who did no wrong in their exams is enough to double the earnings of nearly 2,000 people from an undeveloped nation. Quite a capitalist policy for an organization that claims to be non-profit, wouldn't you say? If you thought that infuriated me, imagine my anger when the following scenario happened. Enjoying my first year of university in Australia, and under the illusion that because the IB is an international organization, I could retake my exams in Australia, I registered for an exam and was thankful to be offered by St. Leonard's College to seat me. However, I was informed of the following rule by the IB. If a candidate wishes to resubmit work for internal assessment or for a non-examination component, the candidate must also have attended classes at the school where he or she is registered for the retake session. This is because the subject teacher must provide academic guidance, mark work for internal assessment, 
and confirm that all work is authentic. This rule absolutely makes no sense. As most of you know, the IB exam is written, marked, and moderated externally, which therefore makes no difference where it is taken. In fact, taking an exam in a different school would ensure more authenticity and even reduce home ground advantage. What the IB does not seem to consider is that there are students out there like myself who have, in a way, moved on to a different university abroad and because of this rule was forced to come back to take the exam at my old school. For me, this meant missing the last week of classes at university and having to fly back literally just to take this exam. Yes, my family had to pay a return ticket from Melbourne to Bangkok just so that I could return for two days and retake my exams. I was lucky, very lucky, that my parents was privileged enough to be able to support such frivolous spending. If I were one of these children, I would have had no chance to retake their petty little exam, let alone do the IB diploma in the first place, considering their costs. This effectively makes the IB an elitist organization, only providing education for those who can afford their over-the-top prices and their capitalist policies. Let us examine, just from a financial perspective, how much my family had to give up because of the IB's decision. Due to their profit-first fairness later policy, a registration fee of 175 US dollars. I was very thankful that my school decided to cover that fee for me. Due to the trauma I experienced following the decision, I had to be admitted to a psychological hospital, the bills totaling nearly 400 US dollars. Due to that elitist rule that forced me to return and retake my exam at my high school, the cost of flying equals 1,200 US dollars. I am being conservative in my estimates, because if we were to look in hindsight, Everything I did regarding university applications went to waste. This included a trip to Singapore for an interview, a three-week summer camp in the UK for an IB revision course, and when you think about it, the IB program itself. This totals to almost 10,000 US dollars. And to add to this, the shame and the missed opportunities that their decision has brought myself and my family, which are priceless. Imagine how many lives could have been bettered with all this wasted money and opportunities. Look at these people. They've never even heard of the IB, let alone in their wildest dreams think about taking it. Yet, it is this invisible elitist hand that prevents them from becoming better, more educated people. It is this capitalist hand that says, we get to choose who becomes educated. It is this hypocritical hand that claims to make people more caring but instead made me realize there is nothing you can do when this invisible hand decides to crush your future. The International Baccalaureate offers a wonderful education but I have learned even more in the past year, the first year after the IB. I have learned about the cruel nature of this world. I have learned that in order to become educated you need to, by luck of the draw, be born into a family that can afford things others dare not dream of. Perhaps the only regret I had in the past year was that I gave in to the IB and redid my internal assessments and retook my exam. I should have made my statement and said, no, I do not need to have a full IB diploma to succeed in life. But sadly, because of their punishment, I have become submissive and I fully believed that I had to come crawling back for a diploma if I wanted anything in this life where corrupted adult minds rule over innocent and enthusiastic or formerly enthusiastic now young minds. So where does this leave everything? Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. This video won't change the world. It won't bring down the IB as much as I want it to. But what can we do as students or citizens repressed by this larger body? My answer and my plea for you is to spread this message. The truth about this profit-making organization must be spoken. Parents and students who consider taking the IB must be made to think twice about what will happen if the IB decide to betray their efforts and their investments and reap some profits for its CEOs by means similar to the way that they have done to me. And do share your opinions. YouTube is a great place for a democratic discussion of topics such as this, which would otherwise have been impossible given the repressive nature of the world today. So please, let the truth be heard.
and thank you for watching this video.